welcome to Crochet Knit Love by Joe. I'm Joe, and this is podcast number seven. I've been absent for a bit longer than I'd planned, not because anything's been wrong. Um, I just took a bit of time off work and we disappeared for a few days away. And then last weekend, we thought we'd escape in our, we've got an old motor home that we got last year, having got rid of our little van. We had a really small van called Vera, which was small. And we got rid of that last year and got something slightly bigger, although she's an old girl. It means I've got a bit of space, cupboards for yarn. And yeah, we disappeared last weekend for Easter in her and did, I think we did about 20 miles of walking and um, played ball games and just chilled out. It was lovely. It's really nice to do that sometimes, get away from gadgets, technology and um, get outside in the fresh air if you can. So I hope everyone's been okay and had a nice Easter, whatever you were doing. Um, sorry if you were working, because I know not everyone gets to be off for that time. So um, I hope either way you managed to get some knitting or crochet or crafting during that time. So what am I wearing? I am currently getting rather warm wearing this because it's a, quite a sunny day today. Um, we've had some lovely weather, haven't we? A little bit cooler today but i'm wearing this quite warm so this is which i've had to make a note of it this yarn is um sidar sidar yarn probably said that wrong um and it's aura yarn a-u-r-a -A. and it's a very it's quite soft it's quite it has a bit of a halo to it and i made this in 2017 when i look back on instagram to see when i've made things it's quite shocking how long ago it was i have not worn this nearly enough because i've made quite a few crochet items and obviously i don't hang them up because they don't recommend it with wool because it'll stretch obviously here is i fold them up put them in the wardrobe and then forget them so obviously this i haven't worn nearly enough and it's lovely. So I was having a sorting, a sort through um, some clothes the other day and then came across this and I thought I'd share it on the podcast. So you can wear it. I've only got a t-shirt under at the minute, um, but I would wear it normally with like a long sleeve top. And it's a poncho and the pattern was in issue, issue 93 of Inside Crochet. It's lovely. I'll start up a little bit so you can see it in its glory still got a squeaky chair sorry about that and um the yarn i think i used maybe five balls of yarn because those of you who crochet or knit knitting you your yarn goes a lot further crochet um eats it up so had this been a knitted poncho i wouldn't have got through as much yarn but then i really like the pattern it's a kind of um, it's four trebles and they make a kind of, let me see if you can see it, that might be better. So they make a kind of fan shape. Um, I was really chuffed when I finished making this because um, I hadn't made a ton of crochet garments. Um, but this was lovely. So issue 93 of Inside Crochet Magazine, I think it was Inside, let me double check again. Yeah, Inside Crochet Magazine, which I'm pretty sure you can, if you can't get the copies of them, um, if they haven't got the pattern on Ravelry, you may find that you can actually download a digital copy of it. I've actually got on my app um, the back catalogue of magazines. I used to always get printed magazines, but they just take, obviously, with all the yarn in the way, I don't have much room for them. So I've got digital ones, which is great because I can always refer back to the pattern or take it with me on my phone or tablet. So it's quite good for that. So yeah, that's um, the um, poncho. That's what I'm looking for. Um, what else? Blanket. I didn't write any notes down today. Well, I've got a couple of bits on the iPad, but I don't think I'm very organised. If I'm honest, I'm really enjoying the podcast. I'm really not enjoying the painfulness of it loading. So I edit it, which is fine. That's fairly quick process and add pictures and bits to it because I like, I like doing that. But loading it onto 
YouTube, our internet is shocking. It was so bad trying to load it. I think by day four, we'd actually ended up going away. We stayed in a caravan um, before Easter and they had um, fast Wi-Fi on site and it loaded within 20 minutes. And yet my, our internet, four days later, you're kind of losing the will. So I need to kind of get around that because it's too... I know some people do Facebook Lives. I'm not quite ready for that yet. I like the fact I pre-record it so I can edit it. Although I think you'll find I do try if I can and record it in one go. Hopefully I can with this one. Ellie's fast asleep, our little dog, so hopefully she'll be quiet as well. Um. Anyway, so yeah, internet's really getting on my nerves. Um, I'm, I see other people who every week they're releasing podcasts and clearly have better internet than ours. So I want to get consistent when I re release it. Um, I don't, you know, I, I'm not about having tons and tons of subscribers. It would be good to maybe get some more purely to make it worthwhile doing all this. Um, but the good outweighs the bad with loading it. I'm enjoying doing it, so it's fine so crochet blanket so i've dug this one out i'm just smiling at my my little dog's clearly dreaming because her tail's wagging while she's asleep <laughs> sorry i got distracted by the wagging tail those of you with pets and they dream and they make little noises that's obviously what she's doing um anyway distracted the blanket this blanket i think was 2018 i think Oh, doesn't it isn't it frightening you think four years ago and you can remember doing you can remember making it so this was granny squares and this is in stylecraft yarn i remember because my favorite creamy color parchment remember the name of that one and that is what i did the main i did a color let's get this right so i did a yellow and a pink and then I did the parchment and then a deeper pink parchment. So I alternated the parchment colour um, to break it up, which I rather liked. So I did a number of squares, can't remember how many, and joined them. And then I did a little border, which was in single crochet if you're in the UK, double crochet in America. And I just did the little stitches and then I added some more. It's one of those, I just carried on doing it. There was no pattern. I just, um, that's the beauty of granny squares is you can just add to it and then add. And if you find your one out, you can just skip. I think I actually got them pretty spot on with ga uh, spaces. So yeah, this one has been, it's in the back of the car. It's on the floor. It's quite an abused one. And where I mentioned early on in my podcast about ends I'm trying to find I've just seen one where the odd end pokes out that's what I've got there it does happen sometimes I've got a lot better at weaving in I wasn't so good at weaving in I was I enjoyed so much crochet and oh, weaving in oh I'll just you know crochet over it so that one is one of my smaller blankets but it's one that's just Back of the car on the floor picnic it's great you kind of um can do any colors with that it wasn't a pattern it, it was just as i went really so yeah the reason i dug that one out is because i'd washed i posted a picture on my instagram um recently where my husband wasn't feeling very well so he had um wasn't covid but he just felt really offside and he ended up under a blanket jake was under a blanket and then the dog was on top of the blanket because i had to take a picture of that uh yeah they're always under him they're actually under him last night i i'm not as much as them uh but i do love the blankets so that's that one what else oh i'm gonna mention because I've been pulled up for not mentioning. Obviously, I mentioned two of my dear friends, Anne and Liam, and our husbands, because we're all, we're all three of us are yarnies, our husbands set up a WhatsApp group several years ago called Crochet Widows. They thought they were funny. And that's where they go on there and talk about, you know, man stuff and 
football and all that sort of thing. And I'm going to insert a picture to embarrass them. Is we were out, I think it was New Year's Day before COVID, and us ladies were wearing um, shawls that we'd made. I think I, I was wearing one I'd made, Leanne had one she'd made, and then Anne, I'd made her one, I think it was for one of her birthdays. Correct me if I'm wrong, Anne. And the husbands decided to wear them. They'd had a couple of beers, thought they were funny. So I took a picture of them. And I'm going to insert it here. And those charming, handsome chaps are known as the crochet widows. And they are getting dragged to Skipton, although they don't come round to Yarndale, but they do the pub bit with the children while we go to see Yarndale. So yeah, I've given them a shout out, so hopefully they'll be happy. So, um, what was I going to... I was going to find some yarn. I've got a pile of yarn here. I'm just going to find what I was going to talk about someone else's yarn. I'm dropping it all on the floor. Oh, up here. So... Um, I get a, I mentioned before where I get a yarn subscription. I used to have a few. I don't now. I've been, I'm being a good girl, particularly now I've started dyeing my own yarn. Um, but I still get something from this, a, an online shop. It will, it's still an online shop, but they've actually got a bricks and mortar shop now and they're called Yarn Works. So that's Yarn, W-O-R-X. And they have, um, there's some yarn dyers called Emma's Yarn and they're over in America, I believe. And they stock them and I get a monthly skein and a little skein as well of their Spectacular DK. So I just wanted to show, um, I'm just checking the dates. I don't think I'm going to spoil anything. This is an older one. So this was July 21. So this shows you how long I've been getting them. And I wanted to show, if you wanted a subscription where you just have one skein a month and you have the option to add a mini skein, then you might want to try this. It's really nice DK yarn. They do sock yarn as well. They do other um, bases. Um, isn't that lovely? I just wanted to show that one. And then this was April's this shirt, which is a um, pinky lavender one so what i want to do is if um this yarn that i like or bags or books or anything like that um i'm not sponsored by anyone i i just want to share what i like and then it may be something you might already get or you might want to try so they don't do you don't have to do a subscription they do actually sell different colors where you can just get one off or sweater quantity um that's really nice and this one is superwash merino with 25 percent nylon so you can make dk socks which i still haven't made i am going to make some i am problem is i've got so many ideas going around in my head of what i want to do and not enough time so yeah that was just that one i wanted to show um i will talk about winnie's yarn i want to show you a yarn bag so i am um, watch a number of really good podcasts and one of them I watched and I have binge watched during lockdown I've mentioned this before was the grocery girls now both they're two sisters from Cana Canada <laughs> we'll keep that in because that's me all over from Canada there we go and um Jodie and Tracy and they both do patterns and you're involved in numerous yarn related things and Jodie makes yarn bags now because I'm a massive fan I I think I want to say this was last year I can't remember Mrs Brown's bags so she makes um bags yarn bags with yarn stitching so I'd obviously shown shown on my other one so this is so yarnlicious which is obviously a uk maker and i've shown that one but i actually got this all the way from canada it's a bit battered because i have used it a lot um and this was one of her yarn bags and this was steampunk the reason i got steampunk is because my son went through a phase of loving steampunk he had the hat the glasses the lot so um this is one of her 
bags i don't know whether she makes this type because she changes which which one she she does this has really really lasted and it's been on the floor it's been on the grass been everywhere and that will hold quite a few skeins of yarn i mean you can see this one is a big bag yeah that's one of my um i love that bag i was so chuffed it's like all the way from canada so yeah i'm a big fan of them go and check them out they they have got the right idea because they do facebook live so they don't have to edit it just loads um maybe one day i'll do that I'm not, i really i'm not ready for that yet bad enough trying to get me to film this so um what should we do winner 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 of the prize from last podcast just trying to find da, 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 da. i bet you all look forward to that i bet you thought i'd forgotten then because there was a slight delay so the last one if memory serves me right was for sock yarn this was the starcraft head over heels yarn and it was those lovely stripy colors nice so the winner of this uh, what i asked was um for you was it did i say about the sock i can't remember see it was so long ago many moons ago anyway <laughs> we picked a winner the way we did it with this one was um names on a bit of paper and then jake pulled one out which was easier because the certain subjects if i mention it on he's like mama don't what what are you talking about so um the person that he picks i've made a note of it um was sarah k so s-a-r-a dot k on youtube so if you can um message me you can either message me on my website crochet knit love by joe.com or instagram either or i answer both and send me your address and i shall send you this and some other goodies so congratulations sarah so sarah had actually said that she didn't know that starcraft made sock yarn which not everybody did so i'm hoping because um i think on here you had only made one pair of socks like me so when your name got picked out um i thought that's a really good thing that you can um hopefully make another pair of socks and if you tag me in on instagram because i love to see what people make the prizes so i have a prize for this podcast so i'm i love bright colorful yarns but i'm never ever going to use all the yarns that i've got particularly sock yarns because as you know i've only made one pair of socks and I have sock yarn up here, the ready-made stuff. And then I've also got um, the hand-dyed sock yarn. So this one by Care Now um, Design. I've remembered how to say your company um, after last time. And this was one I got. It was um, a November contrast. So I've had this a little while. Um, and it's called Kevin. So those of you who may remember, one of the supermarkets did um, Kevin the orange. The orange. Kevin the carrot. <laughs> Kevin the orange. Kevin the carrot. I think it's relating to that, I'm assuming, because look how bright that is. Oh, my goodness. So this is sock um, yarn. It's four ply and it's 425 metres. So you could either make some seriously bright orange socks i thought as the weather's nice let's have something really bright to give away um or you could mix this with something else if you're doing a shawl or you could use this for your heels cuffs and toes whatever you wish or you could just look at it because it is very cheerful but i haven't got round to using it and i figured why not give this away so this is for the podcast podcast number seven this is the prize for it so what i would ask can you comment below and put what you would make with this and you can put why or you can put um that you're not gonna make anything with it you're just gonna squidge it you must all do that squidge the yarn I actually went into a local yarn shop when we were away Easter. I didn't buy anything. No, I did. 
I always, if I go in somewhere, I'll buy like a skeiny yarn or something to support locally. But I just like going and looking at the yarn. But since COVID, I, I don't go in and squidge it so much. But normally you do. You have to squidge the yarn. So this hasn't been too man manhandled, I'd like to point out. But yes, if you want to win this, comment on what you would make with it below. So Winnie's yarn. Oh, I've been busy with Winnie. That sounds fun, doesn't it? Um, I have had a bit of a headache with Etsy. Um, I think it was just bad luck. It. I spent so long loading it. It cost me money to load them. And then the account was suspended. I couldn't get through. I couldn't get any responses. I felt really cheesed off of that because it had cost me money and in time as well. Um, but couldn't couldn't sell anything it finally got resolved but by then I I'd kind of stepped away from it although it's it you know I do need to kind of get more um people buying the yarn and promote it more but my kind of thing is I wanted to do a website I used to have a website for my crafting my card making and I kind of thought well I've always wanted to pick up starting to write a blog and have everything all in one place so i've decided to do a website which is crochet knit love by joe.com and within that is winnie's yarn rather than just having winnie's yarn as a standalone i kind of thought i would i would link instagram into it so that's kind of the route i've gone so there'll be blog posts on there you can get to instagram so if you go on the website um, you can buy Winnie's Yarn, but even if you want to see what's on Instagram or the podcast, they're on there. So you can go to one place and access everything that it will take you um, to whichever bit you want to go to. So I launched that last week and thank you to those of you who bought some yarn. It was really lovely. Thank you. And um, when I package up the yarn, I also put in... Um, a little handmade gift of some sort it could be a little notepad um i've also in the ones that have just gone they've also got a sample of winnie's yarn in there as well just to try because i i've um created a color that's um winnie's pink so yeah you'll get extras in there which um who doesn't like a little freebie so what I've done, I've listed some of the yarn. I haven't listed all the yarn that I've dyed purely because I was trialing it to see how that one went. Um, it has been really well received. And I hope, yeah, that any of you that do buy the yarn, if you tag me in when you get it, one, because I know you've got it, but also I really want to see what you make with it. Um, it's quite a buzz seeing people making things out of your yarn. So, um, yeah, it's over on my website and yes my only apprehension was I wouldn't get as many sales doing it that way but I'm actually okay with that because I still have to work full time um I've seen a couple of yarn dyers that I'm fans of recently have actually gone full time that would be my dream I would love to do everything yarn related full time but sadly it's not going to pay the bills so I have to do it on the side for the time being um I'm going to show you some of the yarn that's on there at the moment that I've done and I'm also going to show what I am going to do there is only one of me so I'm also hoping to get more samples so you can see exactly how the yarn looks so I've done that for a couple of sets and I'm working on one at the minute so Winnie's yarn here what I want to say is my bestie Maria I'm going to mention you you crazy woman um she I've been teaching her crochet she, granny square that's kind of where she's at at the moment but she actually bought one of my skeins of yarn because she wanted to be the first person to buy the yarn which she was she literally as soon as i launched it she was there um i've got to give it to her yet because we're going to have a meet up um but she wanted to be the first one there on my yarn journey i do love you maria <laughs> um very supportive of what i do so and this is your one maria and um, what i've actually done on it i've actually put your name on it so it's uh i don't know why <laughs> just crazy woman um but this is the one she picked which i really love because it has little bits of blue in it and this is uh worsted 
um, merino superwash so it's quite a plump fluffy one and I've also um, I had a stamp made and I've made some handmade tags I really like the bands on yarn but I'm trying this out at the moment because I am trying to make sure what I'm using can be recycled but also um it's just a little bit different with that so I've got your one here yeah. so yeah love her um I've also some of the ones that are on there so that's another one of the one that's the other one that goes with the one that my uh, lovely Maria's bought which is oranges and blues and it has like a salmony pink just random bits I really like them though problem is if I'm not careful I'll end up I'll I'll make some and then I'll end up I think I'm gonna have to do that anyway if we want you know if I make say five of the same color and then I'll have to keep one for myself for our pattern testing of course for showing you not pattern testing color testing swatch testing Oh, I do go off on a tangent, don't I? So these are some of the pinks. I think I've got three of these. These are really nice. They're pinks with a little... I really like um, pink and oranges together. Must be the 80s coming out in me. So I've got those ones. So what I wanted to show was Winnie's Pink. So... Oh, there it is. Winnie's Pink. So this is quite a pale pink. But it's like um, not a baby pink, not like those sort of pinky colours. It's more of an antique rose pink. And I could imagine my nan Winnie actually wearing wearing these kind of colours. So I've undone one of the skeins, but that's the pink, which hopefully you can see. And this is the double net merino it's so soft and one thing when it's dried it really plumps out it's lovely so what i did i tried it on three different bases so i tried it on it's starting to come undone my skein um i did it on the dk merino i did it on the zebra yarn i'm going to do a swatch of i think i've got the turquoise zebra to knit up to show that is lovely and it's already got the black in it and obviously I added Winnie's pink and then my lovely slub I did it on there as well it is a really really nice pink that you could mix with all sorts of colours just trying to find where I really like that's supposed to be grey but it's actually I think it's more of a denim blue I think that would look lovely mixed but you can mix it um you can use the slob on its own or put it with if you've got a random skein of sock yarn it looks really nice knitted in with that so that's Winnie's pink so I've got some li little skeins that I've included in the first lot of orders that went out and it has speckles on it so it's this pink here and it had um, darker pink speckles on it. So that's that one. What else? So I had a go at um, making... Sorry, I'm just trying to... It was all tidy and then it's like... Phew, yarn explosion. I've already shown this. Let me show this before I show you the ones. Where I did some samples of it. Which is these kind of sets that are on there. With the greens. And that's just a standard cow. So this is double knit, DK. And it made a really lovely cow with those colours, which I think I've already shown you. And then what I did was I um, dyed a fade set. I played around with the sock fade and I did it in turquoise and pinks. So let me just find. And they're, they're only a percentage different in the shade but it's it's subtle but it's noticeable and I shall show you one of the pink sets which of course I had to take to test be rude not to I'm just trying to I've mixed them all up so on these these are the fades where you've got a lighter so this is on sock and it's on the um twisted sock which knits up really nice and 
you'll see that's I'll try and see if I'm going to hold them. That's the different, slightly different shade there. And then we've got the next fade, which hopefully you can see. And then we've got there. So they change. If you look on my Instagram on Crochet Note Love by Joe, you'll see that I've actually got photographs of these. So you can probably see it better. So I did a um, couple of turquoise fades. And then I did the pink. I love the pink. And one of them, where I, it was my first sort of experiment of it, you get the odd little patch of white where it's variegated, which I wasn't sure how that would go. Oh, I love it personally. So I've got lovely bright ones and then there's five of them. So you get five 20 grams, so it comes to 100 grams and it creates a fade. And if I show you what I'm doing at the moment, I took some pictures of them for Instagram. I made the cutest little balls. Yeah starting to unravel and let me get that one so i'm working on that as you can see the bag's not messy at all no not at all you see some people and they're they're so tidy with their yarn i'm not it's literally like with sound effects so i've started doing this fade this i did as um an additional i've dropped the ball <laughs> it's a as i start again i did this one as a gray i think it looks more denim color personally but i did this as i've just done a basic cow it's 160 i think i did 160 stitches and because i do um two i knit two in the back purl two for the ribbed edge um, you need to just make sure however many stitches you do are in groups of four. Yeah, excuse me, I'm just going to get that. <laughs> there it is on the floor. So I started, it's the only thing with this poncho, it gets in your way when you're trying to hold your arms up. So I, I've started, I'm on colour number three. I don't know whether you can see, I, I mean, I can see where it changes. And you'll see that I've got the faded this is the lighter colour and then the next one's here and then you'll see the darker pink is here and it's got little patches of white because of the way I dyed it because I wanted it to be variegated and a subtle change. You can see that so that's colour number three and then I've got these two so that will be she says while she's tangled up. You must all get into the same pickle as me, surely. Um, they start all lovely and then you pull them out of the bag and there's just bits everywhere. So that'll be the next colour number four. And then look at that. I love that colour magenta. That's full on magenta. So I've got, you'll see them here. They're not in order because I've literally just picked them up. These are basically these ones there and that's how you can do the fade so all I'm doing just so you can see I was going to do just a swatch and I thought no, I'm actually going to make a cow um because particularly where we were away oh I've got to show you the dreaded jumper that's just reminded me when you're away and I took my jumper that I've been knitting on and getting annoyed with but you can't take that when you're like we got the train to somewhere can't see it they're carrying a big jump around so this was perfect my little little bag and just knitting a cowl I really like the bluey grey at the bottom so it's gonna be quite a tall cowl but it obviously I'll scrunch it up and I'm using my Chelgu needles which I'm a massive fan of and trying to read the size they're 2.75s i've used for this but you could you could easily use 2.5 or 3 these would make great fade socks i'm not quite there yet to make fade socks hence why i opted for an easy cowl uh, but i'm really liking the very what some people do is they will knit the other color into it and then go up i didn't i literally went until i'd got a tight you know a little tiny bit of yarn left and then joined it but yeah that's my little faded set so i've got 
a pink set on there still and I think I've got a couple of turquoise sets and what else oh the dreaded the jumper of doom just wanted to show another one of Winnie's yarn I'm going to undo it so you can see the colours because you can't always see it so well so this one I did a mixture of pink and browns and teal and then there's like a rusty colour in there and um, that's another one of the yarns and that's on DK and then um, I'm gonna put that over there anyway I got distracted by that one right the jumper of doom so those of you who follow me on Instagram will realize that I'm a numpty because I was showing you my jumper that I was doing with I'm trying to think oh it's up there the stylecraft um yarn really I mean by the time I finished this jumper I wouldn't have used two balls of the 400 grams and they're 10 pound a ball so I'm going to potentially make a jumper for 15 pounds which is brilliant and I wanted to make the flax and I've really been enjoying it and then oh, I read the pattern so it's free pattern so I can say I read the pattern that you repeated this section twice what it actually meant was you knit that bit and then you repeat the other section the second part of the section twice not the whole thing how i didn't mean like they've even got pictures on there it's such a good pattern but no not me because i went off on a tangent so i've got a funny sleeve where you have i think it's eight i want to say it's eight stitches of pearl not me no because who doesn't love doing loads of pearls um it's all pearls what i don't even know i was really cross anyway and i know someone had put on my post about putting it away so basically it's been in the naughty corners because i'm i tried to continue with that and i was so cheesed off with that i thought i just need to leave it it's not the pattern it's not the yarn it's me i'm an empty but it's such a nice jumper and i want to finish it so this is the jumper so it's going to be a lovely chunky snuggly jumper i've done it slightly bigger because i didn't want a tight fit jumper i wanted something i could throw on when we're away in our van and i'm at the bottom here i've started finishing for the bottom band perfect length great and then what on earth so there's a the little bit of knit stitch there and the rest is pearl if you look on the pattern you will see it clearly shows a strip of pearl like that no oh, no not me i've just i was really annoyed with myself and it was one of those because you obviously do this part and then split for sleeves it would have meant pulling a load back and i've a couple of times i've gone i'm just going to rip it back and then i can't i don't want to because it's not an expensive jumper and does it really matter um jake had actually said to me mum it doesn't matter because well, it's different it doesn't matter and it doesn't i just i've been really annoyed with myself i just can't even believe i read the pattern wrong but it's just a jumper it's fine i think i would have been more annoyed if i'd messed it up and used like um you know hand dye yarn but it's fine but i obviously have this weird <laughs> so what it should be really is you know that would be on the other side and then you would have um the knit the knit stitch either side <clears throat> i also think my count stitch is off on here because it would be wouldn't it it does fit really nice and then i was even thinking shall i rip this arm back and start it again but i think i'm i'm at the point now just need to finish it and it's a great pattern so why not do the arm the other arm to look like that one and then wear it see how i feel i'm actually going to get um cold to try it on my husband to see what the fits like on him because i could make him one obviously not in this color but i want to make him a jumper it's fine it's uh it happens I think what you need, 
I'm sure I am not the only one, but when you make a mistake on something, when you spend hours on something, it's really annoying when you realise you've made a mistake or I have ripped stuff back, but because of how much this has actually cost, I'm kind of thinking I'm going to go with it. But yeah, I think it still looks all right. Hopefully, do you? But I need to finish it. But I got distracted because I'd played around with this yarn. I, I kind of parked that, that went on time out like a naughty child. And then I thought I'll make something with my yarn sets. So I'm hoping to, we win this yarn, actually knit some little swatches so you can see what the yarn looks like. Um, it is purely, I don't have enough hours. So hey, get a website, a podcast, Instagram, Facebook, and um, what else? Oh, a website. I had a full-time job and life. <laughs> Why do we put ourselves under all this stress? Why do we do it? <laughs> but you only live once, so. And anyway, if I am not successful with the yarn thing, I'm gonna have a lot of nice yarn to knit with. Anyway, I think I've waffled enough. Um, if you've got any questions, if there's anything you wanna ask me, if there's anything, um, you want to pick my brains on what's left of my brains um put a comment below um i really really want to interact with those of you who watch this podcast and if you like it give me a thumbs up so i know i'm kind of doing the right thing with what content i've got on there and if you haven't already subscribe um because it's really lovely to um know that someone's finding this interesting hopefully Look at me, Mrs. Negative. No, it's fine. It's all good. So I hope you all get to do some knitting and crochet or crafting. Walking. We're really into walking at the minute. Did 20 miles last week. A bit tired after that. Um, dog was definitely tired. So yeah, trying to get a bit more, a bit more exercise. So I hope you all get to have a relax and don't forget to enter the competition by putting your comment below. And those of you, I think I've got another one of the is it podcasts, three or four. One of the winners hasn't come forward yet. So please go back and check and see if you've been picked as a winner so that I can get your details and send your prize to you. Anyway, you take care and I'll see you very soon. Bye. Thank you.